Let's all rise up. We'll bow our heads and close our eyes and commit ourselves to the Lord. Now when you come to the Thursday Revival Miracle Hour, you ought to come with a definite purpose in your heart. Because if you don't come expecting anything, then there will be nothing. If there is no request that you have brought, no need in your life you have brought, if you just come because I am a member of Deeper Christian Life Ministry and I have to attend every meeting, and therefore I'm going because today is Miracle Revival Day, but no request, no need, nothing you are bringing before the Lord, then you will come empty-handed and go back empty-handed. But if there is a particular request, something you need, spiritually, on the assurance of your salvation, the stability of your Christian experience, or the sanctification of your soul, or you want to be filled with power from on high, if there is a definite need you have got, and you come with it, then the Lord will bless, and they will bless mightily. stands up here to minister, to speak, if you believe that he is speaking by the Spirit of God, then you will receive what you are believing for. But if you say, I don't think that is the Lord, then the word will become shallow to you. But if you say, I believe that is the Lord, then the Lord will fulfill what you are believing for. And whenever the Lord reveals anything, as we have been hearing in testimonies, if the Lord reveals and He says there is somebody that is suffering of a particular thing, if you are suffering for that thing, but if you say, well, I don't believe that is the Spirit of God. If you say, I don't believe that is uh, God talking to me, there will be no effect upon your body. But if you say, I believe, I know that is the Lord talking to me, immediately you will receive what you are asking for. And we do not want anyone to miss the opportunity that the Lord is giving this day as well as any other time that we come. Receive everything that is said by faith. Accept it is the Lord talking. And the Lord will minister to you. The miracle will happen in your body, in every area of your life. In Jesus' name, Amen. Now I want everybody to be quiet and I want you to listen. You were here last Thursday, perhaps, when the sister who gave the testimony said that she had a terrible problem and that it came on her because her parents had 
been very wicked to her. And she got into worry and fear. And she was very, very bitter. And then, two weeks ago, as the Lord was ministering through us here, that problem was mentioned. She could have said, I don't believe. But she believed. She knew that the Lord was talking about her particularly. And when we spoke the word of faith, the word of faith drove away all the fear within her. And she became totally free because the Son of God is always here to set people who are bound free. Another woman saw me and said that first day she came from another stage and that worry and anxiety had destroyed her life completely. And she said, since I'm on leave, let me go to Lagos. I've been hearing about Lagos. And she came in here. And she had not been in Lagos. She came in that day. She was in the meeting. Singing was going on. She couldn't sing well because of her worry and anxiety. And immediately we got up here and the word of knowledge from the Lord started to be in operation. Then that thing was mentioned. And she accepted. She believed that is me. The moment she received it by faith, what she was believing for by faith became manifested in her experience. For us to grab it in faith. And then it will become manifested in your experience. And she became totally free. And you've heard tonight when that woman said she came last Thursday and she had got her problem by discussing with unbelievers. If you are not giving what you have to unbelievers, they will be giving what they have unto you. If you are not giving them faith, vitality, victory, they will be giving you the fear and the defeat they have in their lives. And so she got it. But she came here. When you come in here, you will drop whatever you have got from the devil. And you will take on what Jesus has offered you and completed on the cross of Calvary. There's a constant exchange going on during the meetings here. You exchange what you have got from the world, you drop everything and then you get something from above. But you see, she believed the minister will not go beyond what you are believing for. If you believe it's a man of God, then the manifestation of what you are believing for will happen. But if you think, how can he know? Well, if Jesus knows, then he can tell his own child. If God the Father knows, then that is easy for him to talk to his own sheep, because my sheep hear my voice. And they follow me. If the Holy Ghost knows your problem, then somebody indwelled by the Holy Ghost can also get to understand what that problem is. And you see the brother that testified as well today, saying he had a problem in the right eye. And when the minister stood up here, the minister said, You have a problem in your right eye. That moment he believed. And the problem was gone. Then the devil came in and said, There are so many people there. How do you know that the minister was talking about your own right eye, particularly? Maybe he's talking about the right eye of another person to your right. If he accepted what the devil said at that time, He'll switch over from what the minister was ministering to what the devil wants to minister. But he kept on believing the word of the Lord. And it is that platform of faith.
that we must remain to keep free. And the moment you believe it, then it comes into experience. And so, as we are coming here tonight, we have come believing. We have come looking up to God. And anybody who knows this ministry will know that we are very careful in using the name of God. We do not call the name of God in vain. We do not say God is saying what he is not saying. Because then we couldn't remain saved if we are telling lies. And in the worship of God and preaching or praying, we can't just be guessing. Because then that will desecrate the worship of the Lord. We live in the Spirit, we move by the Spirit, we walk by the Spirit, and we live by faith. And so when you come in here, believe the Lord, and the Lord will meet your need. Our Father, we glorify your name. We bless your holy name. There are still some doubters who don't want to doubt, but they find it difficult to believe everything that is going on. And if you have any problem believing that the Lord is actually going to bless, there's a doubt, persistent doubt in your heart. You say, I want to believe, I want to believe. But something keeps telling me it's not God. Something keeps telling me it cannot be true. All heads bowed and eyes closed, just raise up your hand. I will pray and that doubt will fly away. As you are raising up your hand, I'm sure you believe I'm a child of God. And I'm sure you believe that I understand the word of God and I know when the spirit is moving and when the spirit is not moving. And I wouldn't have known that there are some still some people doubting if the Lord didn't communicate with me. Now you don't want to doubt because you know it's God that created you. You want to believe God. And you want to benefit from this meeting. And yet as much as you want to believe there's something within you saying oh no, it is not true. Now I'm under the blood of Jesus and I'm moving in the spirit of the Lord and I have the word of the Lord for what we're doing. And the name of Jesus is a strong tower. And I'm coming against that doubt. And the moment you see, the, you hear the people of God say, Amen. Join them. And the doubt will flee away. Amen. And to convince you that the doubt will flee away. For some of you, you'll feel some light within you. It will look like uh, something has been very heavy upon your heart, upon your chest. But all of a sudden, after that, amen, you'll find that there is, it seems light. No more heavy. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that all the people that are battling and struggling with doubt will be set free right now in Jesus' name. Doubts will rob people of the miracle that they need. Doubts will decrease the manifestation of faith in the lives of the people. And so I pray that in the name of Jesus, all those doubts will flee away completely right now. And I pray that these people will be free. Free to believe. Free to pray. Free to receive from the Lord in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you. I worship your holy name. And that person that felt tempted to just open his eyes and see what is going on, if you just receive right now, you will be completely free in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. That tonight you are going to bless us. Tonight you are going to lay your hand upon us. Tonight sicknesses are going to depart. Tonight the work of miracles will be done in the bodies of the people in Jesus' name. We're here for you. 
and we know that you are going to bless us. Yes. You are going to touch us. Yes. You are going to remove what is unnecessary yes. from our body, yes. from our souls, yes. from our spirits, yes. from our blood system. Yes. Deliver everyone in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Yes. your heads bowed and your eyes closed and you keep standing. If you feel anything in your, around your neck that is choking you and um, sometimes you feel it is cough and other times you feel it may not be cough but the thing is just choking you in the neck and uh, sometimes uh, it comes to you or it, will it be an evil spirit or something whatever it is well just raise up your hand and we take authority over it choking you in the neck from the inside, not outside. And the Lord will deliver you. Amen. Uh, when the people of God say Amen, it means they say, so let it be. And I want you to realize that one child of God is greater than the devil. Yes. Higher than the devil. Yes. Because every child of God that comes in the name of the Lord is going through a strong tower. It's exalted. It's made to sit in heavenly places together with the Lord Jesus Christ. And when two, only two, shall agree together, and they agree together by saying, Amen, it shall be done. The devil will be defeated. The devil shall be cast out. And when you hear the multitudes or the thousands of children of God saying, Amen, so let it be to the prayer, it means you are delivered. Believe it so, and it is so. So if you have anything choking you in the neck like that, and um, sometimes it looks like cough, sometimes you can't decide whether it is cough or not, and it looks like it's just the devil wanting to harass you, and sometimes it affects your vocal cord, you are not able to speak well, when it begins to choke you, and breathing becomes difficult, just raise up your hand wherever you are, if one hand is paining you, raise up the other one. Don't just raise up your hand if that is not your problem. But if that choking is a problem, raise up the hand very well. Can you wave that hand? God will deliver you right now. Yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, yeah. we pray right now that all these evil things, evil spirits, evil sicknesses or diseases choking all these men and women in their necks will come against you. Get out in Jesus' name. Oh no, devil, you have no choice. There is no bargain. No, don't move to another part of the body. I stop your movement. Come out in Jesus' name. And I pray that all you that have felt all this choking in the past, I, I command that that evil spirit, that evil sin, that disease will not move to another part of the body. It will come out right now in Jesus' name. I come against you, spirit, in the name of Jesus. And I sprinkle the blood of Jesus upon all these people. And I proclaim the word of God that says they are free and free indeed in Jesus' name. Be free right now. Yeah. Free to breathe. Yeah. Free to talk. Yeah. And all the choking in the neck, be you removed totally now in Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Is anybody having um, pain on the lower part of the abdomen? There may be men in that category, but I'm particularly talking about a woman now. But if you're a man and you have that pain in the lower part of the abdomen, abdomen is a belly, that is the lower part of your belly. Sometimes when it comes upon you, it's like um, it will affect your eyes and you look dizzy. And sometimes it could make you to fall down if you don't sit down very quickly. If it's been like that for you, 
Just raise up your hand. Pain or trouble, rumbling in the lower part of the abdomen. And it's so serious that when it comes, you'll just have to find a place to sit because otherwise you could fall down, become dizzy or something like that. Raise up your hand if that is a problem. There may be men in that category, but I'm talking about women particularly. But if you're a man and that is your problem as well, you can raise up your hand. Remember that Jesus is faithful. Yes. He has taken away all your pain and all your problems on the cross of Calvary. Yes. And when we stand in the finished work of Calvary, we can never be defeated. And as you raise up your hand, as the Lord has singled out this problem, you know it's because the Lord is ready to take it away right now. Yes. And if you believe that it is taken away right now, it will be removed. Yes. Removed completely. Yes. As a sister that has had continual problem with your monthly period, and you could almost at that time pray to die, because the pain will be so much. Also raise up your hand with them. All heads bowed and eyes closed. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, you gave us that name. The name above every name. And you said at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord for the glory of God the Father. And therefore I'm praying right now. Pain, pain has no part. In the body of the children of God. Yes. On the cross of Calvary, it was finished. Yes. On the cross of Calvary, the devil was defeated. Yes. On the cross of Calvary, you brought every believer into hell. Yes. On the cross of Calvary, you removed sickness. Yes. On the cross of Calvary, you dealt with every problem. Yes. And right now, as these uh, men and women are raising up their hands, believing that at the mention of the name of Jesus, that all these problems will clear away. I pray, and I also believe, that it will be unto them now according to their faith in Jesus' name. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. And I ask that the blood of Jesus will destroy all the works of the devil in your body in Jesus' name. Father, set them free in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that the problem will no more be a problem to them. That all these things that have been making them to cry out, and in particular somebody asking, why am I a Christian with all this problem? Somebody already been fed up with this problem, saying, I think I'll just give up, I'll just stay in my house and just forget about the Bible. I rebuke you, devil, in Jesus' name. And I ask that these people raising up their hands, accepting that this is the moment of their deliverance, that they'll be delivered from this very moment in Jesus' name. Amen. Now if you are there and uh, sometimes when you are walking around, anywhere you are going, it looks like darkness, which you can't see but which you understand more than what you see. It's all around you. It's a cloud and it is darkness, especially whenever you want to take decision on an important matter. This thing will come and then your heart becomes clouded. If that is the problem you've been carrying about, Sometimes you can see it. Sometimes it's in the daylight. But the darkness is so terrible and terrific on you. And you're living a confused life. And you're always sensing that the paths of darkness are just following after you. No matter where you go. Then you raise up your hand and we'll pray for you. Don't just raise up your hand. Listen to what I said. Darkness. Almost surrounding you. If you are going, you sense it. It may be in the daylight. And it's the devil that brings that cloud, that darkness. There are times it brings confusion to you. And then, especially when you are to take some major decisions in your life, you feel the darkness and you feel insecure. So raise up your hand. 
you will be delivered. Yes. You know, there is no darkness in the kingdom of God. Yes. So that thing is of the devil. Yes. And as we are standing up, you can be sure we are standing on the head of the devil. Yes. He is defeated. Yes. And Jesus Christ is exalted. Yes. Remember that if you believe that the Holy Spirit is ministering to the body right now, you will get into the experience of what you are believing for. Don't let the devil say, I've been too long around here, I will not go away. He is going to go away. Yes. He is a liar. Yes. And the father of lies. Yes. He has no right to stay. He is powerless. Yes. And he cannot say when we call the name of Jesus. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, yes. we come against all this darkness and the cloud and the confusion. Thank you, Father, because we know you are revealed that actually it is surrounding the inner man. Although when they sense it, it looks like it's just above their head, surrounding their head like a cloud. Yet it is something on the inside. It is spiritual. Now, you powers of darkness and evil spirits that are, are agents of darkness, I rebuke you. Get away in Jesus' name! All you clouds of confusion and darkness, I bring in the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as soon as the light comes, darkness has to go. Therefore, go away in Jesus' name! Move away in Jesus' name! And I pray that the blood of Jesus Christ will be sprinkled upon all these people by faith. And that blood will be a strong tower. A house of refuge. Protection. Over all these people. And they will be at rest from this very time in Jesus' name. And in the night, they will be able to sleep well. Yeah. And all those problems that came because of going to the Habalis when you were very, very young, between the age of five and seven years, and that thing has been upon you, a spell cast upon you since that time, and the devil has had a hold on you and has tied you. Now I stand here in the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. I break all that yoke in Jesus' name! Yeah. Yes, Satan, pack all those things and leave. <laughs> We're still standing in the name of Jesus. So devil, don't look back. Keep on going. Keep on going. We refuse that you will come back. Keep on going. And all these people that you have harassed and oppressed since all those years, since the first time they touched that place, I say you don't come back in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Jesus name Amen. if you have found it difficult to urinate just raise up your hand I didn't plan to do all this I've already opened the Bible passage I wanted to preach on but the Lord wants to deliver right now your, your serious problem is I don't mean that you are slow to urinate um, I mean you have real serious problem serious problem urinating just raise up your hand Whenever you want to go to the toilet, if you feel like urinating, you go there with a sense of fear. Because you know it's going to be a great ordeal, real serious problem. Just raise up your hand. Wave the hand so I can see because some of the hands may be far away. All heads bowed and all eyes closed. You have a problem urinating. And whenever you want to go to the toilet, you do that with serious fear, serious fear, serious fear. Raise up your hand wherever you are, if that is a problem. You will be free now in Jesus' name. 
Tonight is Freedom Night. Yes. Father, you are a wonderful God. Yes. You are the living one. Yes. You are taking all our suffering away in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. When he came into the world, he brought peace from heaven. Power from heaven. And he brought joy from heaven. And he, he came to set in order everything that is out of order. And in the lives and bodies of these people who are raising up their hands, you want to set in order what has been out of order. This is not your will. This is not the way you created them. An enemy has done this. Among some of you raising up your hands, there is somebody you suspect, a human being, and you've had hatred against that individual. As long as you hold grudge and bear enmity with that person, you remain bound. But this very moment, move into the grace of God, move by faith, and accept forgiveness for that person. Look away from whatever the person has done. Don't suspect anybody for your problem. Just release the person, and then the Lord will release you. Father, I thank you. I pray that all these people who have had problems with this area of their lives, I ask that you deliver them in Jesus' name. And whatever brought the problem upon them, you can forgive as well as heal. You can cleanse as well as deliver. Deliver them in Jesus' name. Set them totally free. Yeah. And from now on, correct everything in their body that has made them that has made it difficult for them to urinate. Yeah. Remove the pain. Yeah. Remove the agony. Yeah. Remove the fear that normally comes whenever they are going to the toilet. Yeah. Set them totally free in Jesus' name. Yeah. We thank you because you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Now just open your eyes, but keep standing and take your Bible. Now let me encourage you. Whenever you are told to do something, especially at the time of prayer, just believe that there's a reason why the Lord directed us to do it. I received a letter this week, I think on Monday. Somebody who attended the Sunday worship, when we were praying, she felt the devil struggling within her. And as the prayer went on, the struggling was on. And that time I told people to stand up. And um, she stood up to start with. But when she saw that the devil was struggling, she was feeling the movement. And it was real tug of war as the prayer went on. Then she said, I don't think I can continue standing up. Then she sat down. When she sat down, then that quiet, the struggling of the devil stopped. Because that's what the devil wanted her to do. To concentrate on the problem rather than on the prayer. And then when we finished the prayer, before the people sat down, I said, and sometimes when I say things, you feel, uh, bro just wanted to make us laugh. So I said, I just wanted you to stand on the head of the devil. And then she said, oh, and I sat down. And she took the problem back. And she was telling me that it was a very long letter. She said, I believe that if I had kept on standing, I would have got my deliverance at that time when it was said, I just wanted you to stand on the head of the devil. Because she felt the devil struggling. She knew it. She felt it when the prayer was going on. Now, as the Lord is leading tonight, we are not going to give a long message. 
So I'll just read the passage to you and just tell you one thing or two within five minutes and then we'll continue the prayer because it looks like tonight the Lord wants us to concentrate on the praying. Romans chapter 4 verse 16. Romans chapter 4 verse 16. Therefore, it is of faith. That's telling you that what you get tonight is of faith. That, that it might be by grace. That is, you don't have to feel nice, feel good. You don't have to say, well, I've obeyed all the Ten Commandments, therefore God will give me something. No, everything is free here tonight. And all we ever get from God, we get free. It's by faith, it's by grace. To the end, for the purpose that the promise might be sure to all the seed. The promise of God sure to all, all the seed. Not to that only which is of the law, the Jews. But to that also which, of the, which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. When God said that to Abraham, he had no child yet. But God said, I have made you father of many nations. And when your sickness is rebuked, you may not feel any different. And yet God says, I have healed you. Accept it, receive it, hold on to it, and it will be yours. Before him, whom he believed, even God, who quickness the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were, calleth those things which be not as though they were. When Abraham had no child, God called him father of many nations and said, your children will be as the stars in the sky, as the sand at the seashore. Calling those things which be not as though they were. If you have no job, you receive your job, you receive employment from here. When you cannot see anything, believe, I've got it, and you have got it. You receive it first in your faith, then it will be manifested in your experience. And then you begin to act like somebody that already has. And if you are married, you are looking for a child, the Lord will give you a child. But you begin to see yourself as a mother. Begin to see yourself as somebody pregnant. Begin to see yourself as somebody that has what you have believed for. Now, let me correct a mistake. When you come in here, you receive a child by faith. Don't go and tell your husband, I am pregnant. Your husband might feel that you have gone outside to... He may not know that you have got the child from God. He might feel that you have gone outside to mess up. Let your tummy tell your husband what is inside. You hold on to that thing in your faith and before God. And then, if a doctor has been examining you in the hospital, don't go to the doctor and say, I have got this, I have got this. And you know, he's not trained to believe that. Let his microscope, let his x-ray tell him the story. And then, he will ask you, what happened to you? After his x-ray has told him what you have got, then you can tell him what the x-ray cannot say, how you got it. Receive it by faith. Hold on to it by faith. 
Don't let the devil tell you you have not got it. I have got it. I have got it. But don't go around to your mother-in-law, to your father-in-law, to all the people in the family. This is what I've got. You don't have to talk about it to them. Your tummy will tell them. Are you following me? But you begin to call those things which be not as though they were. And you can be very sure if you begin to call those things which be not as though they were, you are in agreement with God and you and God cannot come to shame. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. He, the case was hopeless. But he stood on the word of God. He was living by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And you're asking, Oh, if I can get a word from the Lord, I will believe it. You are getting some word from the Lord right now. Because when a man of God stands before you, and it says, Thus says the Lord. Now, some people do not know the meaning of prophecy. They feel that prophecy means uh, somebody standing up and saying, Thus says the Lord, I come to you with message from heaven. Then you square up, you stand up, you say, God is talking. No. When God is talking, if you are not careful, you will not know it is God talking. God said, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel went to Eli and said, here am I. Because the voice of God looked like the voice of Eli. And uh, Eli said, oh no, I'm not calling you. Go and, go and sleep. And God talked again. If you are not careful, you will miss it. You will say, it's bro talking. You'll say it's Eli talking. Samuel, Samuel. He rose up and said, Eli, I'm sure this time you are calling me. Why? Because the voice of God, it was not like thunder. It was not mysterious. It was just a normal talking like Eli would have talked. And then the third time again, Samuel, Samuel. And this boy said, I'm sure now. I, I know the voice of Eli. This is Eli calling me. And then went and said, here am I. And then Eli began to realize that when God talks, if he talks like a thunder, you'll be afraid. But he doesn't want to make you afraid, therefore he will talk normally. And then he said, you go back. When you hear the voice again, it's not me. But believe what I'm going to say now. It is God calling you. And just respond by faith and say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. And someone received that by faith. He received that in expectation. And he was nine and again. And the voice came, Samuel, Samuel. It still looked like Eli. It was still the same as the voice before. But now he said, Speak, for thy servant heareth. And God began to speak. The moment you believe God is speaking, he will start to speak to you. And whenever we call out different diseases, this is happening, this is happening, it will look like brass voice. But if you accept that is the word coming from the mouth of the Lord, you will lay by the word that proceeded from the mouth of God. And so he believed. That he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be. And be not weak in faith. He considered not his own body now dead. He did not consider the natural. That he might become spiritual. If you consider the natural. You immediately stop being spiritual. But when you look away from the natural. Then, the work of faith begins. Then you become spiritual. When he was about a hundred years old, 
neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith. What was he doing? Giving glory to God. Praising the Lord. Being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Therefore, because of that, therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. We'll begin to call those things which be not as though they were. The job that be not will begin to call that job as if it is already. The hells you are looking for, you receive it by your faith. It will be manifested in your experience. How can I be spiritual? Look away from the natural. Stop walking by sight. What do you mean by the natural? Feeling is natural. Look away from how you feel. God is faithful. God is able. And He will perform all that you are believing for. What you receive in your faith, He will bring out in your experience. Let us pray. No, keep on standing. Look away from the natural. Look away from how you feel. Whatever the need is, ask the Lord. Ask the Lord. Ask the Lord. Ask the Lord. say here we say to help you claim what you ought to have and when we come here we don't want to add to your problem we want to remove the problem I've said that so that you'll understand that what I'm going to say now you don't allow it to bring fear upon your heart if you have this problem If you have a chest problem and then it's connected with cough, it's connected with your growing lean. And therefore some people have terrified you, made you afraid, saying it is tuberculosis. And I've told you when you have TB, this is what happens, this is what happens, this is what happens. If there's any problem like that, a problem in the chest connected with cough, connected with getting lean, and everybody that sees you say, ah, have you been sick? What happened to you? And everybody has been saying that. If that is your problem, raise up your hand. And if you know anybody 
that has that problem, especially a believer, and you want to stand for that person, you want to claim the victory, the deliverance for that person, but please believe in your heart if you are raising up your hand for that person. If you are raising up your hand for yourself, put your hand upon your chest. Now, you must believe the word of the Lord. There's difference between authority and power. The name of Jesus signifies authority. The spirit of God uh, signifies power. And so we're taking authority right now as we call on the name of Jesus Christ. And when we're in authority, we don't plead, we don't beg, we just tell that thing to depart and it will go. Yes. We come against all these problems right now. Yes. And we come in the authority of the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Therefore, Whatever your name is, tuberculosis or cough or leanness, whatever it is, connected with all these problems in this area, go away in Jesus' name. And I ask that right now, the hand of the Lord will operate in the chest area of all these people and remove all these uh, symptoms and all the virus and all the problems in Jesus' name. And as that immediately, health will come and set in in their body. And they'll feel relieved. And all these problems will vanish away in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you are blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My brother, let your face change your conversation. If you have received it, received it in your faith, then don't talk the old thing. Let all those old things pass away. Now whatever other problem you have, lay your hand there. Any problem you have, is there a problem in the inside of your right ear? Then put your hand there. Any problem you have, whatever it is. No, nothing is too small. You're thinking about some uh, itches or crock or whatever it is upon your body and you're saying, well, I know which um, chemist to go and buy lotion for that. I don't have to pray about that. Lay your hand there. The Lord will clear it away. Yeah. It's able to make your skin the way it ought to look. And all those itches that spoil your underwear, it should not be so. Whatever the problem you have, somebody having heat in the head, thinking on... Will it go? Well, put your hand there. You are changing toothpaste every time because of the bad odor that is coming out. You say, where do I lay my hand? Lay it on your cheek. Father, we thank you. We worship you. We glorify your holy name. You are the one that forgives all sins. And the one that heals all sicknesses. And I pray for all these brothers and sisters, men and women, that whatever problem is represented as they are laying their hands in those places, I pray it will go in Jesus' name. As somebody you are feeling. For now, there's somebody here feeling for somebody. You are not sick yourself, but you are wondering if so and so had been here tonight. You know the problem of that person. Come as the representative of that person before the Lord and lay your hand upon whatever area is paining that person, troubling that person, and take his healing for him in your faith. 
then it will be manifested in his body. Father, we thank you for what you are doing. We praise you because we are living in these days when you are working miracles, when you are revealing that you are a good God, a wonderful God, a loving God, that it is not your will that your children and your creatures will continue to suffer. And you have given us power and authority against all devils, against sicknesses and diseases. And you have said, this son shall follow them that believe. In my name they will speak with new tongues. In my name they will lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. In my name, if they have been poisoned, the, the poison will lose its effect. In my name, if anything is wrong, in the intestine, in their kidney, if anything is wrong upon their body, upon their skin, in their ears, or the heat going around in the head, if anything is wrong in any part of their body, or even with that one a small child that's about a year old, you said, if they'll call upon me, I will answer. And therefore, right now, we come before you, answer in Jesus' name. You have told us that if we come, if we call on the elders of the church and they pray in the name of the Lord, anointing us with us, symbolizing the Holy Ghost, that all these sicknesses will go away and we pray and we believe yeah. that it goes away right now in Jesus' name. Yeah. You said the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And we are righteous by the word of God. We are righteous by the washing of water by the word. We are righteous by the cleansing of the blood of Jesus Christ. We are righteous because the righteousness of Jesus is imputed upon us. And you said our prayers will, it, will be effectual. And therefore we pray that all these people that have any pains, that it will go away right now in Jesus' name. That this moment, the miracle will come upon them in Jesus' name. And Father, I pray for that sister that has been wanting to take a decision and has been going up and down. And she will say, oh, yes, this is it. And that time she will say, oh no, I don't think that is it. I pray that right now assurance and confidence will pass into her in Jesus' name. <laughs> that Lord, as she has been hearing your voice and then she has been saying, well, that is just the voice of my mind. Maybe it's me thinking that out. And she has been confused, not able to stand, not able to take decisions. And then she wants to just, maybe I'll just do something. But I just pray that right now you'll make her to understand that that is not her mind, that is not just herself, that is you talking and she's mistaking your voice for the voice of Eli. Get her settled right now in Jesus' name. We pray that all of you also have looked up to you today for something very definite. That wants us in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for that usher who has not been concentrating. Well, she's, he's following everything, but just didn't think of a particular problem. And she has that problem in the family with the wife. Father, right now, because you are the merciful God, you thought about us when we were not thinking about ourselves. Before we knew you, you sent Jesus Christ to take away all our problems. And I pray that right now, right now, right now, that that problem be removed in Jesus' name. We thank you for all these people who have laid their hands on the places where there are problems. We thank you for the manifestation of your power. We pray that you answer the request and meet the need of everyone in Jesus' name. Thank you for what you have done. Thank you for this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody looking at the wristwatch and saying, Look at the time. By the time I get to that bus stop and I'm carrying a bag, let's pray for that person.
Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. You have not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, of faith, of a sound mind. Our lives are precious in your hand and in your sight. And we're here together with Christ in God. And I pray that as the name of the Lord is a strong tower, that the name of the Lord will be a strong tower over every brother, over every sister. In Jesus' name. This is the day the Lord has made. This is the world the Lord has created. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And we are the children of God. We are living in the kingdom of light. And we have authority and power. And we have the liberty. And we have come to serve the living God. And therefore we pray that as every child of God lives here in the vehicle. Brother, believe it. Believe it. Believe it. As every brother goes in the vehicle, every sister goes in the vehicle, anyone, here, nobody, will be able to touch anyone in Jesus' name.